Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event or webinar, a webcast, an online show, come up with whatever you want to call us. Nobody seems to be able to agree on that terminology, but we are online here live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. So come and watch whatever it is that we do here. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, um, as are our recordings. So you can come here on Wednesdays if you're available. If not, you can go to our website and see our recordings of all of our previous shows. We include the recordings. If there are any PowerPoint presentations or slides or Prezi's or whatever, uh, links to websites that were mentioned, all that um, show note type information is all record, um, included in there as well. Um, we do a mixture of things in the show, presentations, mini training sessions, book review sessions, um, interviews, basically anything. If it's library related, we um, have it on the show. Um, and we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions sometimes, and we sometimes have um, guest speakers that come in. And this week, it's one of our mixtures. It's our um, monthly tech talk with Michael Sowers, a technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And pretty much every single time you've been on, you bring someone on with you. Just about. about just about. No, not always. Here and there. Uh, yeah. and just, you know, just, you know, whatever works. Um, we do lots of techie type things on the show. Like last week, we did about wearable technologies, which is very interesting. Um, but Michael comes on at the end of every month to do um, a tech thing as well. So I'm just going to hand over to you to talk about who you've got on the show and what we're doing today. Great. Thanks, Krista. Uh, as you said, I'm Michael. I'm the Technology Innovation okay. Librarian here at the Commission. And uh, it's great that you mentioned the, the wearable technologies last week because yeah. that was how to um, kind of make things. Uh, mm -hmm. We're kind of kind of go in the opposite uh, uh, direction yeah. today. Yeah. Although, <laughs> although, yeah, uh, uh, learning how things work, this is one of the ways you can do it. Um, when hunting for or looking for topics for Tech Talk, uh, more often than not, I usually kind of stumble over them. And, and this one falls definitely into that category. A couple of months ago, I saw a, um, a promotional post on Facebook that basically said, hey, we're doing this event at the library called Wreck the Library. And it talked about uh, taking stuff apart. And I thought, it just immediately, I was like, okay, we need to get somebody on the show. I, this, we, we, we've got to hear about this. So with us today is uh, Leanne Mobley, the uh, digital literacy librarian at the Martin County Library System in Southern Florida. Uh, good morning, Leanne. Good morning. And uh, she's got a presentation for us about her uh, project and other things they do at the library. So I'm just going to, as Krista handed it over to me, I'm going to hand it over to you and uh, let you take it away. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you both so much for having me. Uh, so today I will be sharing our program called Wreck the Library and also giving you some tips for how to host your own tech take apart. So if you're, if you're unfamiliar with what a tech take apart is, uh, it's essentially an opportunity to learn how things work by taking them apart. Uh, so just like Michael was saying, last week you were talking about how to make things, today we're going to talk about how to destroy them. Uh, so sometimes people take things apart and put them back together for a tech take apart. Um, other times people use the supplies to make art or create other inventions. Uh, for Wreck the Library, it was pretty much just about destruction, so that was our focus here. Uh, we hosted two of these programs for teens at uh, two different libraries in our system, and we had great results with both. Uh, I think the recipe for this program is pretty straightforward and really easy to duplicate. Uh, but that said, I would like to take you through some of the considerations for planning and implementing this program. Okay, so let's start with the most obvious question, why host a tech take apart? Uh, well, first and foremost, the program is very inexpensive. So I think in the end, the only thing we ended up spending money on was pizza. Uh, and when we were planning this program, we were thinking of applying for the mini grant because we did hold it for Teen Tech Week. Uh, so we also was offering some grants for that. Uh, but ultimately, we realized that we didn't really need a grant because there was nothing that needed funding. Uh, so I can, I can definitely say this is a very cheap program. Uh, next up, it feels really good to break stuff. Let me tell you, uh, we've all had a time, I think, when we were frustrated with technology, and it feels really good to get out some of the, that aggression. So plain and simple, feels really good to break things. Uh, another great reason for hosting this kind of program uh, is that it's a really great way to get staff involved. And this was really an unexpected outcome of Rec the Library, and I'll tell you a little more about that later. 
uh, but we ask for donations of old computers, modems, routers, and so on uh, from our staff. And people got really excited about it. Uh, for weeks, I was getting emails saying, oh, I've got an old PC. Can I bring that in? Or I've got a drawer of cables, and God only knows what they are. Can I donate those? Uh, so we received donations from staff across the library system, and it was really cool to see everybody get involved. Uh, and I think the name Rec the Library definitely piqued people's interest. So I got a lot of questions as soon as we started uh, advertising the event. Uh, and finally, this is what I would call an undercover learning opportunity, uh, meaning that whether you know it or not, uh, if you're taking apart a computer, it's really impossible not to learn something. So we didn't have any formal explanation or a lecture, uh, but as the teens were taking stuff apart, I think naturally they would say, hey, what's this? Or some of them already knew, like, oh, this is a motherboard, and they'd be sort of just showing off their skills to some of the other kids. Uh, so even though they might not admit it, I think this was a really good uh, learning experience, in addition to being a good opportunity to break stuff. So hopefully I've convinced you to keep listening, uh, and now I'll give you a little bit of background information. So I'm the digital literacy librarian for the Martin County Library System. I've been here for about a year now, and my background is in film production and art. Uh, something that I do want to point out about myself is that I'm not a teen librarian. Uh, and also, even though I do consider myself to be a techie, I don't have a ton of experience with hardware. So I think the only requirement to host a tech take apart is curiosity. Uh, if you're interested in hosting a similar program and you're a little apprehensive, uh, I can assure you it really doesn't have a lot of prerequisites, just curiosity on your part. So I manage our idea labs and I wanted to tell you a little bit about those. Um, these are our digital creativity labs. So this is where we encourage our patrons to experiment with technology uh, and to use our software and tools to create things. So the Idea Lab is similar to Umedia up in Chicago uh, or of the same name, the Idea Lab out in Denver. Uh, but one major difference for us is that our Idea Labs are for all ages instead of just teens. Uh, and we actually tend to do more adult programming in the Idea Labs. And we currently have two of these idea labs, and uh, we're planning to expand that to, uh, to all six of our locations. Uh, a little information about our library system. Uh, Martin County is located in South Florida. We're along the Treasure Coast, so we're just, just north of Miami. And we serve a population of about 150,000 residents. So right now we have six different library locations spread across the county. Uh, and I did want to brag a little bit that I think it was last week, uh, Stewart was named number three on the list of 20 best small towns to visit in 2015. So if you're planning a vacation, you should consider coming and visiting us out in Martin County. Now I should also tell you a little bit about our demographics. So we are in Florida, uh, about 28% of our residents are 65 or older. So many of our patrons are retired, a lot of them are snowbirds, uh, so they come down in October and November, and right about now in April and May, they're starting to head back north. So our service population does fluctuate throughout the year. And the reason I wanted to point this out is because I know a lot of libraries find it challenging to reach out to teens, uh, to create programs for teens, but I think if we can host a successful teen program here in Martin County, then there's really no reason that it can't be done at any library. So back in November, speaking of teens, uh, I was looking ahead at the calendar and wanted to start brainstorming ideas for Teen Tech Week. So I went to Sarah Johnson, hopefully she's listening today. Uh, she's our literacy education and outreach manager. So I went to her because I knew that she had had luck with teen programs in the past. Uh, and when I sat down with Sarah, I was really hoping that she would reveal the secret to getting teens in the library. Uh, but as it turns out, uh, neither of us had that secret. So instead we listed some things that we know to be true about teens. Now, first of all, we knew there had to be food. That's a given. Uh, we also liked the idea of after hours events. So most of our libraries are open from 10 to 530 and we do have some evening hours throughout the week. Uh, but like I said, a lot of our patrons are retired. So the general rules of nine to five don't always apply for us. 
uh, but we did want to have our event in the evening and only open up the library for teens. Now another thing we know is that generally speaking, teens don't like to be around adults or little kids, uh, so we advertise the event as a program for teens ages 12 to 18. Uh, and finally, we also agreed that teens do not want to feel like they're in school when they're at the library. Uh, so it's okay to teach something, but we wanted to avoid being sort of teachery. Uh, we wanted something that was more hands-on without any formal lecture component. Now, my original idea was to do something with Wreck This Journal. Uh, and if you're not familiar with this book, it's amazing. Uh, it's full of different activities and sort of creative prompts like draw everything that's on your desk or take this journal in the shower with you, uh, tie this to your bike and ride it around town. So uh, once you've made it through the journal, it's completely destroyed. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of the author, Carrie Smith, and I really wanted to incorporate this into our program and I was trying to think of a tech component. So the idea of wrecking things uh, then led me to the idea of taking apart computers. So another one of my favorite books is called Things Come Apart. So the artist, Todd McClellan, uh, deconstructs computers and then he meticulously organizes them and uh, the, the pieces and photographs them. So the photographs are really beautiful and uh, even though we didn't really worry as much about the finished product, I think this is another direction you could take this program if you did want to incorporate photography or video. So we, uh, we looked around at some other libraries and museums and had a pretty good idea of what our tech take apart would look like, uh, but I didn't really want to focus more on wrecking things. So I kind of had this visual in my head of teens going crazy and destroying things, and I just loved that, and I really couldn't let it go. So I, I thought of the scene in Office Space. Uh, there's the characters can't seem to get the printer to work, so they take it out into a field, and there's this incredible montage of them destroying the printer with a bat, and they're kicking it. It's, it's really awesome. So I have a link to it here, uh, but I wouldn't mind at all if you close out of this and open up YouTube and watch it, because it's really fantastic. So the next step in putting together Wreck the Library was to actually gather materials for us to destroy. So I sent out a department-wide email just explaining what the program was and also listing some suggestions for possible donations. So originally we considered asking patrons for donations or uh, going through existing library equipment that was already broken and maybe using that. Um, I think every location has at least a drawer or two full of this stuff, uh, but using anything that was library property would have required uh, getting permission from the county, so we knew that was going to be more effort than it was worth. Uh, we also chose not to ask patrons for donations because we were afraid that they would continue to bring things in after the program had taken place, and then at that point we'd have to figure out what in the world we were going to do with all this junk. Uh, so we stayed away from that. But asking uh, library staff and volunteers for donations really worked out just fine. So we asked, uh, we have tech liaisons at each of our branches, so I just asked each of them to sort of collect the supplies uh, up until a week before the event, and then we had our courier transport everything to the right library. So the only issue with materials was that after the first program, because we did have two separate Wreck the Library programs, uh, and after the first one, everything was so thoroughly destroyed, I thought we would be able to recycle some things and use them again, uh, but we were almost completely out because they really did wreck everything. Uh, so we had to, after the first one, in a week's time, had to round up some more donations. So I would say it's better to collect more than you need, uh, because if you tell teens they can destroy something, they definitely will. Uh, and lastly, we did also save some donations from the Friends of the Library. Uh, usually they put those things in the trash, but we just asked them to, things that are too dirty to sell or old encyclopedias, so we just asked them to hang on to those for us. So here's a list of some recommendations for supplies. Computer towers were definitely a big hit, so computer towers and laptops, uh, because they do have so many different pieces to take apart. Uh, but smaller things like keyboards are a lot of fun, too, because you can pop out the keys and kind of play with that. We had a lot of donations of old phones and TV remotes, and those are really easy to gather up. Uh, we also did include some old books, like I was saying. 
Um, so our, our friends hung on to those donations. And that's where we got uh, some VHS tapes. Those were really fun to take apart too. So when you're, but when you're rounding up supplies, I would say, uh, in general, if it has screws, that means you can take it apart. So if you're not sure whether or not it's something good for this program, as long as you can find some screws, that means you can uh, deconstruct it. So here's a few things that you'll definitely want to avoid. I'll talk a little bit more about safety, um, but right off the bat, these are some things that you probably don't want to bother with. Uh, so first up, tube TVs can be really dangerous, so really any, any older TV before flat screens and so forth, uh, because they can hold an electrical charge for a really long time. Uh, really any kind of TV monitor is, is a potential hazard, uh, and anything with glass should be avoided. We did have a scanner at the first program, and uh, one of the kids ran up to me and asked if he could shatter the glass, which was terrifying. Uh, so I had to pry it from his hands, and I removed the glass myself, and then there was still quite a bit to take apart, so it worked out okay in the end. But uh, really, you can also sort of pre-rec things. Uh, so for instance, we were hoping to sort of pre-rec an iPod and a, a broken Nexus tablet that we have just by using a, a heat gun to remove the screen. Uh, we ran out of time before the program didn't get to do that, but that's definitely an option. So the scanner is another thing. We could have easily just taken the glass out beforehand, and then that would have been an appropriate thing to rec. So in addition to gathering things to break, uh, you'll also want to gather up some tools. So we already had a little computer toolkit that we had ordered on Amazon, and then we scavenged up some extra screwdrivers from each of the library's toolboxes. And honestly, I think screwdrivers and pliers are probably all you really need. Uh, it's good to get the really itty-bitty screwdrivers that come with computer toolkits. Uh, because then you'll actually be able to take apart computers. Uh, but gloves, gloves are another thing that you might consider. Uh, luckily, we didn't have any casualties, a few scratches here and there. Uh, but if you did ask your participants to wear these sort of cloth worker gloves, that would take away some of the safety risks. Or you could at least give them the option if they wanted to. Uh, we also put out a hot glue gun in case anyone wanted to create something but uh, that didn't get a lot of play. So as far as tools go, it was mostly for wrecking things, not really for creating things after the fact. Um, another thing I highly recommend is doing a test run beforehand. So I had never really taken apart a computer before this program, and I wasn't really sure what to expect. Uh, so before we actually had Rec the Library, I took apart an old cell phone that I had and an old Mac laptop. And I got to say, it was a blast. Uh, if you had asked me to put it back together, that probably would have been a little more stressful. But just taking it apart without that pressure was really fun. And then kind of trying to guess what all the different pieces are. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and it took away a little bit of the the stress of not really knowing how this program was going to play out. So if you've never done it before, uh, find anything, just a, a phone, a remote. If you have access to a computer, that's great. Just take something apart so you can get a feel for how it's going to play out. So to promote our event, uh, we created flyers and we printed them out in quarter sheets to hand out to some of the teens. Um, I designed our handout and ended up opting for uh, bright colors because I had originally designed something with a lot of black. It was really cool and it really emphasized the wreckage. And then at the last minute, I sort of chickened out because I was afraid that a bunch of metalheads were going to show up and actually wreck the library. So I kind of chickened out there. But uh, the final result was a little fluffier, but I think it still works. So we also feature this on the main page of our website a couple weeks beforehand. Um, like Michael was saying, we've shared some of it on Facebook as well. Uh, and of course, we relied a lot on word of mouth. So we asked our children's assistants to share it with their teens. Uh, and then we also contacted some local teachers and let them know that we were having this event. So a few notes about staffing. Um, for the first Rec the Library program, uh, there were only two staff members available. So it was just me and Sarah. And that worked out OK. But I will say that uh, we had five for the second event, and that was a lot better, especially because uh, one of those five was Ricky. And he's our IT guy. He's a genius. 
Uh, I mentioned before that you don't need any prior experience with taking apart computers, uh, but at the same time, if you can call on someone who does have that experience, uh, you'll be much better off. So Ricky was really great about answering questions, uh, and he did some deconstruction as well, which was sort of a good little demonstration another uh, undercover learning opportunity. So I would say in general, the more staff you can get, the better. Uh, you definitely don't want to have more staff than actual teens there though, so I guess it's a balance depending on what kind of turnout you get. And I should share some things about safety uh, because the scariest thing about this event is that there really is the potential for someone to lose an eye or a finger. Uh, so here's a few tips that will prevent your teens from electrocuting themselves. Uh, first and foremost, if you get any donations that you're on the fence about, uh, just forget it. So we had, uh, I mentioned that you shouldn't do TVs. Uh, we did have a couple of donations and I thought, well, maybe we could give it a try. Uh, but in the end, I just said no and we didn't use those at all because we had enough other supplies and it's really not worth the risk. So if, if you don't know what it is and you're not comfortable taking it apart or you think it might be a safety hazard, I would say just forget it. Um, another thing you can do right off the bat is to establish a work area. Uh, so even though we had opened up the entire library specifically for this program, uh, we definitely didn't give them access to the entire library. So I'd say it's good to focus your efforts in one area uh, and that way you can make sure that nobody goes rogue. So that, uh, that leads right into the next safety tip, which is don't leave teens unattended. Uh, when we were at Morgade, so for the first event where there were just two of us, uh, we directed everyone to the Idea Lab, which is in the back of the library. Uh, so there were times where Sarah or I would have to step away and there would just be one of us manning the fort. And ideally, you really want at least two sets of eyes to make sure that nobody is off burning books in a corner somewhere. Um, luckily, we did have, for the first event, some parents kind of hung around and were reading books in the magazine area. So in that sense, we had some extra sets of eyes, but definitely better to have uh, a few staff members available. So the last thing that you want to do is, well, you want to lay down the law right away. So at Morgade, I wrote on this whiteboard, wreck the library, don't wreck yourself, which I think helped a little although you can see here that one of them <laughs> crossed it out and said no safety. Uh, but uh, I, think, I think it's good to just establish that right off the bat. Uh, I welcomed everyone as they came in and I showed them what supplies they could choose from and then I just included a brief safety message, please don't hurt yourself, be safe, uh, and so on. So it's good to clarify that even though we want them to be destructive, we really don't want them to hurt themselves or others. So it's good to establish that right away. Uh, Leanne, we do have a question oh, yeah. that I, I think is maybe related to this part. Uh, someone wants okay. to know if you have participants sign a release form of any sort. Oh, you know, we didn't go that route. I suppose that's something you could do. Um, I, th I really feel like if you have enough staff members, enough eyes and ears, I don't think it's an issue. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I guess if you, had, if, if you knew you were going to have, let's say, like 30 or 40 teens, at that point I probably would. Yeah, more of a chance of something. Well, yeah, I, I recently took apart an old uh, uh, portable hard drive and, uh, you know, trying to find the screws and everything. But I, I did come out with a couple of bandages on my fingers from <laughs> screwdrivers and stuff. So, I mean, I, oh, yeah. I tend to not be the person who thinks of signing a release form, but I can see somebody really kind of saying, you know, wanting that for just, just in case a screwdriver slips and slices someone's hand. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And I, I feel like the for us, the most destructive kids, their parents were there. <laughs> so we could tell right away like that they were going to be little terrors. And it was like, oh, phew, well, you know, grandpa's sitting right there. So if anything happens, like, <laughs> he, can, he can handle it. Uh, but yeah, not a bad idea, definitely. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, so next up, uh, that brings us to actually setting up for the program. So a few days prior to the first program, we removed hard drives from all the computers that were donated. That was specifically requested by a lot of our staff because obviously they didn't want any of their information getting out there. Um, we also tried to remove the power supplies, so that gets rid of any electrical hazards. We did miss one in one of the computers, and luckily Ricky saw it as one of the kids was taking it apart, and he just ran over and said, nope, and grabbed it from his hand, so everything was okay. But like I said, eyes and ears, very important. 
uh, we laid everything out on a on a big long table and then we just spread out tools at sort of smaller workstations. Uh, and because our event was after hours, uh, Sarah was sure to contact facilities and have them turn on the AC because even though it was March, it is Florida, so there you go, it was hot. Uh, one thing that did happen was that our cleaning crew showed up during the first program and they had the most terrified looks on their faces when they saw these teens just totally destroying everything. So we, we probably should have warned them beforehand, but we did at least assure them that they wouldn't have to clean up after us. So it ended up okay in the end. All right, so that's enough talk about logistics. Um, so now I'll share with you sort of how it all played out. So the first round of Rec the Library was here at the Morgade Library. Um, like I said, Sarah and I were the only staff members here, uh, but up until it started, to be honest, we weren't really sure if anyone was coming. So we started, the library closed at 5.30, we started at 6 o'clock, so we were kind of hanging out, uh, trying, to, trying to determine if anyone was going to show up. Uh, but sure enough, we did have about 10 teens in attendance, which for us is really great. Uh, and some of their parents stuck around, like I was saying, to get in on the action too. So you can see there's a mom here and she was taking apart stuff too. And that was okay. Um, I, I hate to single out this gentleman in the red and blue striped shirt, but he taught us a valuable lesson uh, that you really should not allow anyone younger than 12 to attend a program like this. So he, uh, his grandpa had actually emailed me before the program and asked if he could attend, even though he was much younger. Uh, and at the time, I thought, well, I don't know if we're going to get a turnout, so I may as well say yes and let him come. Uh, but in a lot of our pictures, he's blurry because he was running all over the place. And he wasn't trying to take things apart so much as just beat things to death. Uh, so you can see in this picture that he's just banging a pair of pliers against this laptop. So even though we encouraged destruction, he really did become a safety hazard to himself and almost to other people. So uh, throughout the night, some of the other kids were sort of chiming in and telling him to calm down. So I think overall, it's just best to not have uh, kids in this event. Now, um, he wasn't the only one who didn't hold back, but I'd say it was about half and half. So some of the kids were really, really focused and they were really meticulously deconstructing these materials. Uh, and then the other half were really wrecking the library. I mean, it was kind of nuts at first. Uh, and another random thing that happened at Morgade was that a lot of kids wanted to take stuff home, and some of them were talking about even selling things, which I think is kind of hilarious because everything was totally in shambles by the end of the program. So I don't know who's going to buy that, but something to consider, whether or not people can take away materials after you're done. So here's some more kids. Like I said, they were pretty pretty focused and actually taking things apart. But I think we should have re recorded a soundtrack of this event because it really did sound like people were just banging things around. Uh, this is my partner in crime, Sarah Johnson. Uh, so she was the only person who actually made something from what they destroyed. Uh, we put out a few art supplies, thinking that some people uh, might want to make their masterpiece, uh, but they weren't really having that. And I hate to stereotype, but I do think that if we had more girls, we might have seen more things being made. Uh, we didn't really push for it because we were more interested in the idea of chaos and wrecking things and learning by taking apart. Uh, but that's another direction you could take if you did want to focus more on making things. So Sarah's creation was lovely. So round two of Wreck the Library uh, was at the Hope Sound Library. And we don't have an idea lab there yet, but Amy, who's the children's assistant there, has done some really great teen programs, and she has a bit of a fan base, so we were hoping to tap into that. Uh, and the attendance was about the same. Uh, we had about 10 teens that night, and this group was a little bit older, and we did have one girl, woohoo! Uh, so the first, the first time we didn't have any girls show up, except for me and Sarah. Uh, and I'd say this event was a little more successful um, mostly because we did have more staff. So we were all kind of geeking out together, we were taking things apart, uh, and also setting up and tearing down was much, much easier with all of us. Uh, so the setup was pretty similar, and one thing I didn't mention about Morgade was that uh, we, well, we were in the Idea Lab where we have these really great teardrop tables that fit together. So this is new furniture for us, 
And of course, I didn't really think about the fact that they would be destroying things on top of it and potentially destroy the furniture. So I didn't put any sort of cover down and luckily nothing got damaged, but that really could have been a disaster. So when we were at Hope Sound, we used these old six foot tables uh, that are from the auditorium. Uh, they're pretty worn out already, so we knew we didn't have to worry about it. So furniture is something to consider because whatever surface they're working on is could potentially get scratched. So something to think about as well. So here's some more wrecking going on. Uh, I think some of these guys were hoping to sell things too. I'm not really sure where they got that idea, but uh, I think most of them left empty handed. Now, destroying VHS tapes was by far my favorite thing. It is really mind-blowing how much tape is inside one VHS movie. Uh, I think we're taking apart True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger here. And here I am sporting my new shawl, uh, which is very, very Zoolander derelict. But uh, now, now that I think about it, that's another direction that you could take this program, uh, wreck things and then make them wearable. Uh, also in the background, you can see um, another one of our Sarahs. She's cutting out pieces from a book to make a little keepsake box. So again, I think generally the girls were more interested in creating, and I think you could place more of a focus on making things, maybe even do a follow-up program. So two parts, and the first part is that you wreck things, and the second part is that you take the components and actually create something. And there's our only girl. <laughs> so she was great, and she didn't make anything that night. Uh, but she did take home this little computer fan, uh, and she told me that she was going to take that home and make a sculpture with it. So that was kind of neat. And this is Ricky, our IT guru. Uh, so he wasn't able to make it to Morgate for the first round, but it was really, really great having him at Hope Sound. Um, if you have any IT staff who can help out, I highly recommend reaching out to them. Uh, he has years of experience, and he's also a really good teacher, so he helped out a lot. Uh, and he also volunteered to vacuum at the end of the night, so that was another bonus. In retrospect, there's um, a few areas where I have one we... question that oh. came in um, about how, how, how many hours long was each of those events? Oh, yeah, so we did, each one was just an hour and a half long. Okay, not bad. Yeah, so between, you, the first hour was total destruction, and then we fed them with pizza to get them to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. So I'm sorry to say that there's a few areas that, where we did drop the ball. The biggest one, and I hate to admit this, but I'll be honest, is that most of our supplies wound up in the trash afterwards instead of being recycled. Uh, so we do have an e-recycling center here in Stewart, and I was able to take a small uh, round of things that I had in the trunk of my car after the fact, um, but that was really something where I should have researched that beforehand, uh, because at the end of the night we were all tired and wanted to clean up, and I thought we would sort of temporarily store things, but we don't. We didn't really have space for storage, so. At that point, it was like, should I put everything in my car or just put everything in the dumpster? So I'm sorry to say that most of it did end up in the trash, but I think there's options. Uh, so you just have to look locally and see if you have any sort of tech recycling places in your area or if there's a place where you can store things because, like I said, you could do a follow-up program and use the materials for crafting or other things. Uh, but because of storage for us, we just had to get rid of most things. Uh, let's see. So another thing, like I was telling you, is that I think you do really need to be strict about the age limit. Uh, if you want to have the program open to kids who are younger than 12, then you would just need more staff members to supervise. Or maybe, like we were talking about before, if you did want to do some sort of a consent form, you'd probably want to do that with kids younger than 12. So I think our age range, 12 to 18, that's probably an appropriate age range for this kind of program. Um, and even though everything worked out fine with the first event with just two of us, it was less stressful to have more staff available uh, because we had, like I said, Ricky was there on our side. So it's just better if you can have a few more eyes and ears available. Uh, so that pretty much wraps things up for me. I did want to share a couple more resources. The first is from the Exploratorium in San Francisco, and they do something called a toy take-apart. 
So I can't get enough of this picture of this kid destroying this Elmo doll. I think that's awesome. So if you did want to do an event for younger kids, because maybe you're a little worried about safety concerns, I think a toy take apart is a really great alternative. Uh, now another resource I have to point out is Instructables. So there's a ton of instructions for taking apart technology there. Uh, all you have to do is just look up how to take apart blank. Uh, you'll probably find what you need. Uh, and they also have one called How to Take Things Apart Without Killing Yourself. So great resources there. Uh, but that's pretty much everything I have for our Rec the Library program. So now I'll open it up if anybody has any other questions. Great, thank you. Um, as as she just mentioned, and as as you can tell, we've we've already taken a couple questions from the audience. Please feel free to uh, type those questions into the Q and A. Krista is monitoring those, and also we will happily listen to your dulcet tones if you have a microphone. Please, uh, we would love for somebody to to uh, uh, speak their uh, question. Um, I I was kind of writing questions as we were going along, and and you ended up answering most of them. It was usually like the next slide, so that you know that's a good sign. But um, I, I do have a few others. Um, you mentioned the uh, the computer tool kits that you had. Um, I, I have one of those myself. And I saw, obviously, the kid with the pliers, which I know those that's that's not the, the type of pliers that are typically in a computer toolkit. So what, what other tools and or implements of destruction did you have be, beyond the, the computer toolkits? Um, beyond the computer toolkits, uh, really just like those pliers that he was using to <laughs> to beat that laptop. Uh, but yeah, we, I grabbed some pliers. I just went through our library's uh, like main toolkit, so like where the hammer is and the, the different screwdrivers. So I just grabbed everything that we had on hand. I think screwdrivers are the biggest thing. Uh, and then pliers will help you sort of if you just want to pry things apart. But um, as far as the electronic toolkit, it was great for the really small screwdrivers, but almost everything else in the kit we didn't really need. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really just screwdrivers to get into those tiny little screws on like the TV remotes and the computers. Um, but other than that, I think the, the tools that you need are pretty minimal. Yeah, and I know when you get into, uh, as, as I learned the hard way, taking apart uh, the uh, hard drives, you get into those like star-shaped screws and those, those really weird ones that those yeah. computer toolkits can help with. Um, so, so did you have kids... Uh, other than the one, we'll we'll, we'll kind of leave him mm -hmm. off to the side. Um, yeah. <laughs> your pictures kind of implied they tended to be a little more methodical in trying to take them apart properly, for lack of a better term. Did you have somebody, you know, just take a hammer to a computer case and and? Um, it yeah, apart? maybe I should have shared the video because I think I say it was half and half, but some of those kids were really. It was, the first event, like, Sarah stepped away. I think she was ordering the pizza. For a second, I was a little bit scared because <laughs> they just went at it. Like, I, I, a lot of the kids were just, like, banging things apart. And I was, like, I had to kind of go over there and be like, all right, I want you to wreck it, but you, you can't, like, see how there's a screw there? You have to unscrew that. You can't just, you can't just beat, uh, you know, beat a screwdriver against it. You probably want to actually take those screws out. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was definitely chaos, which is what I wanted. So I was kind of laughing because I'm like, in the moment, I'm thinking, oh, this is, was a terrible idea. For a second, I had a moment of panic. And then I was like, you know what? This is exactly what I wanted. Everything's going to be OK. Uh, they almost start, they, a lot of the teens kind of like govern themselves. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, they kind of were looking at each other and going, dude, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> or like, dude, what are you thinking? Well, and, 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 and on that, have, have you considered safety goggles for the next time around? Oh, that's that's another good point. I should have added that to the list. So I think gloves and goggles are a thing where if you are concerned, well, yeah, good point. Yeah. Gloves would definitely be a good thing to have on hand. Or I'm not, um, glasses, right. rather, goggles. I think yeah. this goes on. Someone just actually asked related to this. I think it's related. Did you give them any introductory instructions other than the safety first, like maybe that kind of thing of here's how you can take something apart, or did you just put the stuff out and say, go to it? <laughs> We really, it was really hands off on our part. We just, yeah, we just showed them where everything was. Um, once they actually sat down, everybody kind of picked one thing from the table and then sat down with it and either started beating it to death or trying to take it apart. Uh, so we did kind of just make our way around and give tips or, uh, and they were giving tips to each other too. Um, but it was really informal as far as there was no, there was no instruction really. Mm -hmm. It was just sort of as we went, they were asking questions or trying to help each other take things apart. Um, so yeah, it was definitely very informal. 
Um, and did you have the kids, or might you in the future have them help clean up? They did help us clean okay. up, uh, which was good. At the at the first one, not as much, but definitely at the second one, they helped us clean up. And that's where it came in, where they really wanted to take stuff home. And it was like, are you crazy? What are you going to do with this? Oh, I can sell this online. Okay. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, so we said, if they wanted to take things, we did let them take them because, like I said, a lot of it we just ended up throwing away. But, um, but yeah, very strange. Sure. Um, so, uh, are, are you going to do it again? I think we will. Um, probably not until next year's Teen Tech Week. Okay. Uh, but I, I think some of us are afraid that we'll get too many donations of things, and then we, like I said, storage is an issue. Right. Mm -hmm. So as far as collecting things and hanging on to things, we just don't really have the space for that. Uh, but I could easily see us doing this next year for Teen Tech Week again. Gotcha. And, and one, one of the ones I had written down, which you then did, was the, you know, had you thought about doing a, there's the take apart, and then a separate program of, of creating art out of it. Uh, you mentioned yeah. that that was an idea. I, I think that sounds like a, an interesting possibility. Yeah, and the, a lot of the images that I used for these slides today are when I did my, my pre-test and I took things apart, I photographed all the pieces, and I had a lot of fun doing that. So I think that's, that's a really cool way to bring in photography. You could do things with, like, time-lapse video of you taking things apart. Uh, these kids in particular, I think, really had no interest in any kind of follow-up. But if we had framed it that way, framed it as a two-part thing, and really promoted it that way, I think that could definitely work. Right. Um, and do you, what might you do differently to try to get more girls to show up? That's a good question. Um, I think if we did a, a two-part workshop and the second, or, or even in one, in one program, it was more emphasis on making things. I think that would have drawn in more girls. Okay. Yeah, maybe the destruction is more appealing to boys. Again, I hate to stereotype, but maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I, I know I enjoy taking things apart. It's the putting back together yeah. that's the hard part. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's not the hard part. <laughs> um, are there other questions coming from the audience at this point? I've, um, I've got one that's a little off topic, so I want yeah, to save that. Yeah, not a question, but just end. someone has a, a, a comment, I guess uh -huh. I'll call it. Um, someone says they're at their library. They're doing a how it works style summer reading program this year, where hmm. they show up with a box of computer parts and then finish with a complete running machine. Ah, so mm -hmm. you know, awesome. here's the parts, and then we're gonna make it into something. And he says this destruction construction programs are very are pretty good for middle schoolers, teens, and curious adults. So this could also be yeah. doesn't have to be just a teen. I, I've I've done that with yeah. adult librarians, where here's where we take it apart and pass the pieces around and put it back together when we're done, and hopefully it still turns on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more, more often than not, it did. So, you know, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think a program like that, you probably have more to gain as far as you can learn a lot more that way. I think, uh, but that said, I think the beauty of this program is that it requires a lot less planning, oh. um, less expertise. It's a little more free form. So I think either either one has its uh, pros and Yeah, and it gets them into the library and it's fun. I mean, so, you exactly. know, they, they are learning something, even if it's not strictly organized and they can say exactly yeah. what they learned at, at the back end. Um, so, so so my kind of slightly off topic uh, question based on one of your pictures, I saw you had a, a Raspberry Pi sticker on what looked like your lanyard. Um, oh, yeah. Are you guys doing anything with, with, with pies in the library? Um, we're doing a little bit. I, um, the, the gentleman who was in my position before, uh, they received a Best Buy grant, and so we got uh, Raspberry Pi kits, Arduino kits, uh, Lego Mindstorms. Ooh, nice. So I was completely new to all these things when, <laughs> when I started at this position, uh, mostly just coming in with some enthusiasm and curiosity. But I would say I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around Raspberry Pi. We have done some, a few, like, drop-in programs. We did one for Pi Day. Uh, so we, we played around with the Raspberry Pis, and just hook them up to monitors, but mostly we were just playing games. So I would say we're kind of, I'm still just sort of scratching the surface for programming with these with these tools, because they're really awesome and there's a lot that you can do with them, but I am struggling to find things that you can do in a short amount of time. Right. So, yeah. you know, I want to do a program that's like an hour and a half, two hours tops, um, and then it's also hard because they can't take them with them. Like, you know, mm -hmm. if you have less expensive 
uh, sort of wearables and stuff that they can take away, that's really nice. But if they make something really cool and then it's like, well, that's that, give it back, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah, and the Pi by itself is really just a small computer. So once you've kind of explained that, it's it's not that different than, you know, here's, let's do something with this laptop. Um, but, yeah. but, you know, then you start connecting it to those other things and then it gets a little more interesting. So, uh, yeah, I think you have to do maybe like summer workshops or, you know, ongoing programs if you really want right. to really want to do something cool. Cause it's hard to do one and done with those things, but they are awesome. Yep. Um, so that's it for my questions. Anything else from the audience? This is your, your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you mentioned some videos. Are those online somewhere that we could link to after the fact or are those? Oh, videos like the office space clip? Or no. Well, I think I, I thought you said you took some video of the kids. Oh, no, we oh, didn't. We did not. Okay. Saying, I wish we had because, or at least some sound because that, that probably gotcha. would have Okay. My mistake. I, I misunderstood. Yeah, that, <laughs> I also just have a comment that said um, they're getting ready to use the pies here in the library for remote temperature yeah. and humidity monitoring in our storage areas. Okay. Yeah, so if you hook an Arduino the, to so, it. And, yeah. yeah, rather than, you know, doing a program, but just the library saying, hey, we can actually use these so totally yeah. different, you know, angle. Um, yeah. So I think they're great yeah. OPAC workstations, too, because they're uh, super they're tiny very simple, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and very low power. But. Mm -hmm. All right. And just a comment. Great program, Leanne. I think I'll be exploring this option here soon. Yeah, so I, I want to do one. <laughs> I, I want to go attend one. <laughs> so, Very cool. Um, I'll, I'll be in Jacksonville in June, but maybe a little too much of a commute for, for me down there. But anyway. Oh, but we're the number three top you know, small town to visit. Yeah, I got unfortunately, I'm visit. literally flying in, doing something, and flying out the next day. Uh, otherwise, uh, I would love to come visit, but... Uh, uh, anyway, one day. Um, so, uh, Leanne, thank you uh, very much. Uh, that was wonderful. That was uh, kind of every, everything I hoped it would be. It looks like it's a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, if if in the end, uh, just the, the people watching this are inspired, I think we, we've done our job with that. Um, so I think with that, we're going to uh, take back control uh, for a little bit. I, I just have, uh, I'll let Krista take the controls there. Uh, I just wanted to, to take a minute. Uh, this is, uh, if I did the um, looking up right in our archives, this was the 63rd uh, Tech Talk that, that we've done as part of the show. And the first one was on uh, December 30th, 2009. So uh, at the, the end, end of our, our first year, first year we, we started this up. Yeah. And and then if I if I really looked right, all but four of them have had guests of, of oh, really? one form so or another. New... So that was a little, I had to eyeball that one just a, a little more, uh, including though we have had um, some with multiple guests when we did shows at conferences and things like that. So, so well, well, kind of pushing 70 some guests on this. Um, and as, as some people may know, this is actually the last tech talk. I, I am moving on to another position uh, here in Nebraska. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to a thank all of the guests that uh, I've brought onto the show. You've all been absolutely wonderful and I've learned a lot from you. And I want to thank Krista also sitting next to me for, for being the, the host of Encompass Live and doing a great job. And Encompass Live will continue. No, I'm not going yeah, anywhere. Yeah, no, Krista is not going anywhere. No, no, no. Uh, Look, I am. Yep. <laughs> She's like, see, see, there's more. Uh, so yes, there is, there's not going to be a tech talk next month. I don't know if, if somebody else comes on, if, if they'll pick it up again or not. But uh, although it looks like you did get a tech topic for uh, at the end of next month, Blake again, right? For doing security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen to Blake. He knows security. He runs my websites. He knows security. I actually so. looked it up, and I don't know. It's, it's been a couple of main, years. It mm -hmm. has been, yeah, yeah, 2012. But we also have our videos, our recordings go into the Internet Archive. Yes. We have a mm -hmm. channel in there. His old one from 2012 is the most viewed on the Internet Archive. Really? Not the most viewed of our YouTube channel, so it's interesting. Who right. watches Different what, people where. know, I don't yeah, know. YouTube versus But uh, um, it's the Internet one that comes up with the most views nice. in the Internet Archive of all the Encompass Lives. Wow. And ours on YouTube are usually cataloging and um, um, summer reading programs. Oh, sessions. okay. Yes. All right. Hit but the but in the Internet Archive, tech. You want to know about yeah, yeah, security. Yeah. I, I kind of believe that. <laughs> I mean, I really do. So I just, like I said, I want to thank all of uh, my guests. I want to thank Krista for, for putting together this uh, wonderful show and letting me have uh, one show a month. And uh, so that is going to wrap it up for Tech Talk.
All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you, everyone, for attending this week. Um, as I said at the beginning, the show has been recorded and will be available later this afternoon, most likely. I did grab, Leanne will be sending me her slides, I believe, and I did grab links to um, the Instructables thing, mm -hmm. the, the uh, book take apart any of the books. I found both those books that she mentioned in WorldCat, so I've linked to those. Great. So you have quick links to those everywhere. Um, whoops, that's not the right thing. <laughs> that's how to get a hold of Krista. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be available in our archives, which I just was showing you before to show where all of our other TikToks are here as well, um, with links to everything, as I said, um, slides, recording, and um, links, yeah. Presentation. Presentation, yeah. Uh, and we have all of our recordings here going back to the very first one, January 2009. So if you do want to watch anything that we've ever done before, go on here and um, take a look at them. Other than that, hope you'll join us next week when our topic is Let's Make This Look Good, Graphic Design for Maximum Engagement. Um, Megan Frost is a librarian up in Paul Smith's, Paul Smith's College in New York, um, is going to do a session on doing basic graphic design principles for doing marketing and, pres and um, flyers and things like that. So, um, you know, for many of us librarians, we don't have training mm -hmm. in that area necessarily. It's a, you know, it's a separate thing, but you can do it. And, <laughs> and this was a requested it. topic, wasn't it? It was, We yes, had we somebody a submitted a yes, request. Someone yeah. asked for if we we're someone that, that they really wanted help at their library doing this kind of thing, and they weren't sure, they're trying, but yeah, stuff doesn't look that good. Um, and could we get something? And I found she actually did this session up at the Midwest um, Library Technology Conference in Minneapolis. Sounds right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Upper Midwest. Uh, it's our middle of the country library technology conference. And I was just perusing their um, agenda and I um, contacted her and she's going to be on the show with us next week to tell us all about that. And then I also hope you'll join us for all of our future shows too. The week after that, we have Courtney Young, current ALA president, is going to come on and chat with us. So that'd be cool Yay. to have Courtney on the show again. Um, she was on years ago before she was <laughs> a big name in life. So, so then, we had her first. Yes. <laughs> Um, it was actually one of the things we did together out computers and libraries. It, it was one of the yeah, one of the yeah, one, one of the conferences. Um, yep. What we call it? on on site uh, on site live uh, yeah, sessions. So that'll be coming up. Um, other than that, if you are a big uh, Facebook user and Compass Live is on Facebook, please go, do go ahead over there and like us. Um, we post when new shows are coming up, uh, when recordings are available. I do a reminder every Wednesday of when the new show is about ready to start because uh, you can log in on the fly. So if you are big on Facebook, please do um, go ahead and like us over there. Big, big on Facebook, so big in Japan. Or something. <laughs> I don't know which is better. <laughs> All right. So other than that, I think that wraps it up. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very yep. much, Michael. Yep. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye. Bye.